Hello friends, this is Anna from the San Diego River Valley Conservancy. Today we're going to be talking about pollinators through the Climate Kids program at Climate Science Alliance. We're going to learn about who pollinators are, the important role that they play in our lives, how they'll be affected by a changing climate and increased human activity, and what we can do to help them. To get our brains nice and warmed up, we're going to start off with a video called The Beauty of Pollination on YouTube. Go to youtube.com and you may need some help from a friend or family member and search in the search bar, The Beauty of Pollination. You're going to select the first video entitled The Beauty of Pollination produced by the Oprah Winfrey Network. Now, before you go and watch that video, I want you to keep two things in mind. I want you to work on noticing different things and wondering different things while watching this video. For example, I noticed during the video, I saw a lot of different types of animals. And for example, I wonder why so many different birds were going to the same flower. So go ahead, pause here, and I'll see you when we get back. Okay, I hope you had the chance to notice a lot of different things and even ponder some wonderings. So this is a great time to pause and share with those around you things that you may have noticed or wondered about while watching that video. Now that we're talking about pollination and pollinators, I wanted to start with some of the different animals that we just saw in that video. Pollinators come in many different shapes, colors, and sizes. Looking at these photos, what type of animals do you see? Do they have anything in common? What about some differences? So moving into groups of pollinators, we're gonna start with insects. You can see butterflies and bees, but there are different insects as well that are specially designed to pollinate particular plants. Similarly, so are birds. They're designed in a particular way to pollinate different types of plants as well. And unexpectedly, there are bats and other mammals like rodents and mice that are pollinators also. Last but not least is wind. Wind is a pollinator that most people don't notice. Pollen is flying all around you and you might not even be able to see it. But if you start sneezing and getting watery eyes and the sniffles sometimes in springtime, that's usually because of the pollen that's being moved around by wind. Let's pause and share here as well. Look at the questions on the screen and talk about them with the person next to you. Have you ever seen any of the pollinators we just talked about on flowers in your backyard? maybe your patio, your neighborhood, or your schoolyard? What do you think makes them good at pollinating? And what types of plants do you think that they might pollinate? Pause and share. Now that we know a little bit about who these pollinators are, let's talk about the process of pollination. Pollinators are attracted to flowers and plants because they have something that the pollinators need, and that's food. Flowers have something that's called nectar. It's a sweet liquid that pollinators need in order to survive. When the pollinators are on the flower and drinking up that nectar, they're rubbing up against the flower and getting pollen stuck all over their bodies. When they fly around to other flowers, that pollen comes with them and rubs off onto other flowering plants. When the pollen is moved from one plant to another plant, it will grow a seed or fruit. Pollination is one of the most important processes on the planet. Without it, we wouldn't have access to almost all the foods that we know and love like apples, blueberries, chocolate, coffee, melons, or peaches. We wouldn't be able to grow food without our pollinators. And plants wouldn't be able to survive either 
because they need pollinators to help them grow new plants. So I'm going to be showing you two images. This is the first image. And it's an image of a typical grocery store produce section that has fruits and veggies because of the work that bees are doing. They're pollinators. So take a really close look. Notice the different things in this picture and maybe pause if you need to before I move on. Now that we're at the second picture, this is what our produce section would look like without bees. What differences are you noticing between this image and the image we just looked at beforehand? Pause and share. What differences did you notice? Pollinators are under a great amount of pressure they're facing threats like pesticides, habitat loss, disease, and climate change. When we do things like driving our cars, watch TV, use electricity, we burn things called fossil fuels. When these fossil fuels are burned, they release an invisible pollution into the air called greenhouse gases. In small quantities, these gases aren't bad because they trap heat and are actually responsible for keeping our planet habitable, meaning it's comfortable to live here. But what's happening now is that people are burning way too many fossil fuels and releasing way too many greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. These gases are building up and creating a thick layer of gas in our atmosphere. This layer of gases acts like a big blanket around the earth. It's heating it up and changing the global climate. Because of climate change, pollinators are facing rising temperatures, a lack of water, and a spread of invasive species and disease. Before we move on and discuss the things that you can do to decrease the impact of climate change and protect pollinators, I wanted to review some of the information we've just discussed. Thanks for sticking with me. So now we know that pollinators are different types of animals that help plants make fruit or seeds. They do this by moving pollen from one part of, of the flower of a plant to another part or another flower. The pollen then fertilizes the plant and allows the plant to reproduce. A really important role in people's lives. It creates a lot of the foods that we know and love but our pollinators are being greatly affected by climate change. Most importantly though, humans and people like you can take actions to help protect our pollinators and decrease the impact of climate change. In terms of climate change and its impact on pollinators, there's good news, we can help. As climate kids, each one of us is responsible to take action to help protect the earth and the plants and animals that call it home. I want you to look closely at these 10 different things that you can do to help. Pick one that you think that you can do and you can commit to. This will be your climate commitment. Before we wrap up today, I want to give you the opportunity to pause and share your climate commitment. Thank you so much, friends, for sticking with me and learning about pollinators, who they are, why they're important, and how we can help them out in the face of climate change. Until next time, my name is Anna from the San Diego River Valley Conservancy.